Have you ever been scammed? Congratulations, you have won a brand new car. To redeem this prize, please type in your credit card number. Well, we were almost the... <sighs> What's the opposite of victim? Like, villain, con artist? I don't know. Wow, we almost screwed somebody bad. On accident. Historic times of 1998, Dad bought his very first Jeep. It was a 50th anniversary 1979 Jeep CJ5. But he wanted to get something a little bit bigger to bring us on the trail a little easier. So he sold that Jeep and bought a 1980 Jeep CJ7. He built that one, put big tires on it, and then got rid of that one to start a new project on another CJ7. This one had a big small block Chev motor, huge 39 inch tires, and a gorgeous purple custom roll cage. But he ended up selling that Jeep to fulfill his lifelong goal and dream of having a 2011 Jeep JK four door. So he could finally bring the whole neighborhood with him on the trail and have plenty of room for coolers, lunch bags, toolboxes, extend. <laughs> <laughs> Extension ladders, anything he'd need in his new Jeep JK. But last year, we started getting into some nasty wheeling. <laughs> After spending all that time and money, Dad didn't want to be the guy that goes out and wrecks a nice Jeep. So what it came down to was it was time to sell dad's JK and get him into something a little bit more nimble. We gotta take two seconds because literally while we're filming this, we looked right outside Brady's garage and saw a freaking river running down the hill behind my dad's new house and it's flooding the basement. So we gotta dig a trench really fast to try and direct the water away from dad's house. So hopefully there's only minimal damage. That's the river that is just literally flowing off of that hill saturating all of this snow and it's running through underneath the snow and down into this window holy crap it's coming through the window filling this thing clear full they're gonna build a trench from over there along this snow to there to try and get all of this snow out and away from the house Backhoe kept getting stuck over here, so new plan. Brady's gonna start digging. My dad went to the other side. We're hoping this is gonna work. dig a trench from up there bringing the water all the way down and uh it's getting deep they're starting to get stuck but i think it's working it's slowing the water down i just built this whole trench try and redirect the water into the deep trench running away from the house. We're right about to break this thing through. Tomorrow. We woke up this morning to a beautiful mid-April Southern Idaho morning. I'm about 
about ready to freaking lose it on this weather. It can't decide if it wants to warm up, flood the house, or freeze and give us more snow. We gotta show you guys how much water is in the basement of my dad's house right now. Check this out. Look at all of this water in here. There is a solid, it might swamp my boot. Barely, oh my gosh, then there's another step. There is literally a solid 18 inches of water in this basement. Luckily, our aunts and uncles had uh, the pump. So they came up here, brought it up, and we're gonna start pumping this water out. That thing looks like a full on industrial grade dam. This is like full on fireman hose too. We're gonna put this down by that door where it's the deepest and try and pump this water. You can't even see it because of how much snow, but up over this is the river that flows off of the hill down there. Oh, you can see where the blue line is? That's gonna pump all of that water up and out of there. You ready, Brian? Here it is. Oh, hey, here we go. Yeah, it's going. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Well, we've sprung a leak. Might be kind of hard to see. What? Well, I've had it. All right, you hold this. You don't gotta stop it. You just gotta slow it down. Wow, you guys are good with duct tape. Oh, yeah. What do you think our Jeeps are held together with? We're experienced. Wow, look at you guys. All right, Dad, hit it. This is going to work like a dame. No, we're good. Uh, we're, we're silly. <laughs> no. It's all right. All right, here, wait. I'm going to throw some more duct tape on it. For the ladies and gentlemen back home. Try to do it tight. I'm trying. A loose duct tape job ain't gonna do you no good. There you go. That's, that's there. how a duct tape guy does it. That's what it ought to sound like right there. Didn't they teach you how to do that in elementary school? You betcha. Well, they're really leaking worse now. <laughs> the tech bill. Time. Later. This pump's been going for about two hours and the water level has come down about two and a half inches. And the only reason we can actually tell is just where you can see the water level was. Long story short, it's not moving very fast. And at this point, there's really nothing that we can do to help this basement. It's just gonna take time to get this thing pumped. We made sure that all of the new water that's gonna come down the hill as this whole place floods, it will all get diverted and none of it will go in the house. So let's get back to the Jeep. So long story short, we threw this Jeep up for sale and we had quite a bit of interest in it. And we had one guy in particular that really wanted it. He had the cash, he was pretty local to us. So anyways, he was on his way up here. We pulled it out to clean it, get all the stuff out. The tranny started slipping. Get out of here. Oh yeah, yeah. The transmission had never done that before. It probably didn't help that it was 20 below zero too. There was yeah, about 19 yeah. feet of snow on That's the- That's true. Horrible. So what we decided to do right before the guy got here uh, was we hurried and ran to O'Reilly and got some transmission stop slip. I threw it in and then just gave it to him. So. <laughs> 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 no, oh, that ain't kidding. what happened. That's what somebody would have done to us. What we did was we took the, the bigger man approach. Big guy. Bigger man. We didn't want approach. this guy to end up with a piece of junk. Yeah. So anyways, we told him, sorry, dude. Like, we don't want to sell you a bad Jeep. We had to kind of tell everybody that wanted it what was going on. We wanted to fix it before we sold it to him. And the deal didn't really work out after that. Yeah. So, uh, that kind of puts us to where Braid's gonna explain the rest. With the transmission going out on us, that gave us the perfect opportunity to pull this thing out, put a new one in, as well as update the operating system that runs the transmission and the motor to a newer generation, which gives us so many more drivability things, such as tap shift, better throttle response, more 
things that we can mess with with tuning and lots of other things like that, as well as the right transfer case gear ratio. We had it close the first time, but it just wasn't perfectly, you know, optimal in this Jeep. So we were able to update and do all of that to this Jeep. With all these new parts on this thing, new transmission, new transfer case, whole new operating system, this thing should be dialed. Keyword, should. Let me show you a couple of the problems we got now. First up in the list, we've got a beautiful check engine light with all sorts of codes. For some reason, when you put it in neutral, the throttle pedal doesn't work. Big toe. And as soon as you put it into gear, it dies. And about 10 seconds after you start it up, it don't matter how hot the motor is, the fans start running faster than Alex when we've got work to do. And to top it all off, it's got a bad random misfire. Before this Jeep started having all these problems, it ran perfect until us three got in the computer and started messing with the throttle percentage and we ended up frying the computer completely. <laughs> so we've got to take this thing down to somebody who actually knows what they're doing and probably put a new computer in it and get this thing running perfect again before dad knows what's going on. That right there is how we almost accidentally scammed somebody out of 65 grand. If that tranny hadn't slipped that day, we would have given this Jeep to a guy with a bad transmission and had no idea, and he would have thought that we tried to scam him. And that is not the kind of people we are. Tomorrow. Our shop is almost completely up. Here's a warm welcome to the new Peck Brothers headquarters. operations in here you take your pick <laughs> we don't have anywhere else to go all right i'm asking so I'm a Jeep lover, and I've been watching the Peck Brothers for about a year now. And I saw in one of their videos, they needed some help building a building. So we moved our schedule around so they could get this building built so they can keep these videos coming. And now they owe me big time. We owe him huge for this place. The total dimensions of the shop is 60 feet long by 50 feet deep. And on this side of the shop, we're gonna do pallet racking all the way across this and onto this wall. Put all kinds of Jeep parts, tires, and all kinds of stuff like that for the videos. And as you come over to here by this door, we're gonna have a mezzanine. It's gonna come up right here, up some stairs, and go up to a platform where there'll kind of be like a hangout spot. So we can edit, we can film, we can charge our camera equipment, kind of have everything nice, that stays nice up there, nice and clean. Down under the mezzanine, we're gonna have a workspace. We're gonna put sick lights up in the top, and this is where all the toolboxes, workbenches, all of the tools and machines we use to work with metal are gonna be down here. The last probably 10 videos you guys have seen, we've all been shivering. Freezing. Freezing cold. So the best part about this shop is we're putting a big wood burning stove that's gonna have a pipe all the way up and out and we're gonna be able to get it boiling hot in here, and I'm stoked. We're gonna have sunburns in the middle of winter oh, because I'm, of this. I'm gonna have it going into summer just because <laughs> I'm still cold. <laughs> because this place is the Peck Brothers headquarters where we're gonna film, we had to be super careful with the lighting in here. The garage doors aren't gonna have windows. The door has blinds. The other doors don't have windows. And the windows are really high, so it doesn't overexpose us. That way we're not gonna look like vampires in here because we're so overexposed. <laughs> and then I gotta spend hours color grading these videos. We're gonna be able to have one preset color grade. Doesn't matter to you guys. 
but the lighting in here was was a huge deal to make sure it was perfect because this is where all the videos are going to get filmed. We put two humongous six foot footings under here for a big two post car lift that one day when we can afford we're going to put it in here. So along with the car lift, we're actually gonna do a winch system up here on these beams to be able to cycle the suspension on our Jeeps to make sure all the clearances work. It'd be way convenient to cycle suspension, take off your shocks and do all kinds of stuff like that. Alex brought up the idea of putting a track system in here, being able to slide that winch over and work from both bays of the, the shop, so. I think we should keep using the high lift jack to cycle suspension. Oh, well, that's what I'm gonna do, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> but for real, if you guys have ever done that or seen anybody do it and have good ideas for us, message us, because I don't really see it. I guess you guys probably know what you're talking about, but we've if you never have a good idea, let us know. And we we've never had good. anything this nice to do anything cool with. No, we need very, very cost effective too. Like if you've ever <laughs> seen a track system like that for like for like five bucks, bucks? If it that'd be, be made cool. out of like PVC or something. <laughs> <It'd be killer. laughs> let us know. You've probably noticed that there's an upper section and a lower section. The lower section's definitely deeper to fit two Jeeps front to back front to back we could probably fit i don't know could probably put 10 know, jeeps probably, in here yeah, if we, we squoze them in yeah so we can put a few in here but up here on this level this is where everything's going to stay clean like there's not going to be oil stains and like you know alex ain't going to be pulling apart his transfer case up here no this is going to stay nice swept clean You'll You're going to be able to, eat, gonna be able to eat an enchilada right off the floor up here. Yeah, so that's the plan. That's why there's an upper section because we can just easily distinguish which place gets cleaned up and which place you got a little bit of room to, you know, maybe not vacuum the cracks. This shop has three garage doors, but the two down here are 10 feet tall and 12 feet wide. They're massive and they go straight up instead of curving. So they're going to be out of the way and it's going to be awesome. So this garage door over here, we made 14 feet tall, and that was so when we buy another school bus, we could probably <laughs> put it in here, hopefully, if we don't have to extend the roof. But this one is gonna go another three feet taller than the actual door, and then it will go up and flat. So we'll have a total of 17 feet um, of headroom up above that garage door when it's open. If any of you guys have good suggestions on two-post car lift, uh, epoxy for the flooring or some sort of finish that's heavy duty and will withstand you know lots of abuse good bright lights for a good price pallet racking that's heavy duty enough to hold heavy jeep part or any other cool ideas that you found work good in your garage or your shop we'd love to hear them and please post them up in the comment section thanks for watching peck brothers off-road